So Andrea Inamorato de Santos is from the Joint Research Centre at the European Commission, and her role largely involves research and policy support around ICT for learning skills and around open educational resources. And she works on the Digicomp EDU framework for higher education, and she's going to talk to us about some current developments with the framework. So over to you, Andrea. Thank you very much, Rob. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's such a pleasure uh, to see so many people gathering online for, for this morning's event. Thank you very much, Rob, for the kind invitation to, to speak to you today. And um, today I will take you behind the scenes with me, really. I think that's the goal, because I know that you are all, or at least most of you, very familiar with the framework already. So I will focus on current developments and news for you that I think may be of interest, okay? So um, as, as Rob just said, I am a, a scientific officer, a senior researcher um, at the Joint Research Center. I'm based in, in Spain, in Seville. I'm speaking from, from the south of Spain right now. And in there, I've been looking after uh, the higher education side of the GCOMPEDU framework and also the tools that we use to support them. And I'm going to talk uh, through a bit more about the tools because I think I, I have some news for you today. Um, so before um, I start, so in order just to give a general overview of the, the framework, we now have a video that we have recently produced on the GCOMPEDU. So I will play the short video for you. So it works also as a means of introduction uh, for anyone who is not very familiar with it. Okay, so let's hope the sound works now. Digital transformation is happening all around us, changing many aspects of daily life from entertainment and retail to how we work, learn and communicate. Teaching is also impacted by this digital change. Education plays a key role, preparing learners for the challenges of an increasingly digital world. Educators through the education and training system need to be confident and competent in using digital technologies in their profession. Many national and international projects define digital skills for educators and support teachers to acquire them. The European Commission has worked with education authorities, educators and other experts to develop a shared definition of educators' digital skills. The European Framework for the Digital Competence of Educators, also known as DigComp Edu, is used widely in Europe to discuss educators' digital competences, to help them embed technology in teaching practice, and facilitate reflection on their digital competence. DigComp Edu maps educators' key digital competences under three pillars. The first describes how teachers use technology in their work to collaborate with colleagues, parents, and others, and to support their professional development. The second pillar describes educators' digital competence related to pedagogy. It is about using digital technologies and resources efficiently and effectively to support teaching, learning and assessment. The third pillar focuses on helping learners develop their digital competences so that they can use technology in confident, critical and creative ways. DigComp Edu is for educators in all levels of education, from early childhood to higher education, adult learning, general and vocational education, as well as non-formal learning contexts. It helps inform education policy, supports regional and national initiatives on digital competences, and can be a guide for governments, organizations and training providers to create digital competence programs for educators. The framework includes a progression path describing six stages of technology use, from awareness and exploration to leadership and innovation, guiding educators on how to further develop their skills. Using the framework, the European Commission with experts from across Europe is building a free online tool which will enable educators to reflect on their digital skills, help them identify their strengths and where they can improve further. Join us and find out more about teaching and learning in the digital age. Brilliant. So as you see, there are very few views you know, so far for this video, only 165 because it's, it's a recent production. So I'd like to invite you to please um, have this, uh, copy this uh, URL for the moment in case you want to access the video and, you know, and share it. Perhaps we could share it on the chat so everybody can save it. Um, we have also worked towards the inclusion. We have prepared uh, subtitles in all European languages in order to make it more inclusive. So I really hope that this is going to be useful for you. No? 
Okay, so um, as you realize towards the end of the video, there was an announcement of a tool. No, so far, as you know, we we have the framework, no, which is the theoretical uh, definition of what it means to be a digitally competent educator, plus the six areas that you know well and that you're going to work with later on today in the second part. But um, based on this framework, we have been using the checking tool that I think that most of you are familiar, in which you have questions that you can go through that self-reflection and towards the end of it you have a report no you have a report on your skills so now apart from the checking tool which is a tool that is ever evolving now we are building a new tool called selfie for teachers okay so some of you may know that we already have a, a selfie tool no called a selfie but selfie as it is nowadays is based on the gcomp org framework um and it's for uh, schools mostly for schools no and now Selfie for Teachers is going to be like a twin tool for Selfie for Schools, but specifically for teachers, in which the questions in there um, are based on the GCOMPEDU framework, uh, similar to what is happening now with the checking, but with a more robust platform. Okay, so this is going to be launched in September this year, and I'm going to invite everyone to, to be part of this launch event in September. Uh, but I have to say that for the moment, we are planning a launch of this tool only for school the school education sector okay but hopefully in a couple of years we plan to at, at the latest i hope no i can't say for sure but hopefully it's going to be soon extended to the higher education sector so for me it's very important that you know uh, from now that you are going to start hearing a lot about selfie for teachers selfie for, for teachers but you should know that this is not for higher education at this very moment so at the moment we keep on using the checking tool okay until we launch the selfie for teachers for higher education, right? Okay, now, um, there has been uh, also a revision process uh, for the questions that are that are in the self-reflection tool, both for school education and for higher education. Uh, for school education, uh, before we had 22 items, no, in the tool, uh, the questions were 22, based on 22 items, and now it has been um, revised and we have a new tool that is going to be launched uh, uh, alongside Self for Teachers uh, with um, a new bank item of 33 items in total. So there has been an increase in the number of items and questions in the tool, okay? And that's going to be launched in Selfie for Teachers. Now, with higher education, which I think is the main goal of everyone joining the subject this, this seminar today um and please correct me if it's if i'm wrong okay but i think that's the focus today we have also made a revision uh, of the the checking questions um and now we have 25 questions before it was 22 now we have 25 and we have included another area uh, on those questions based on another framework that we have developed at the GRC, which has become again very relevant, which is the Open Edu framework, a framework for, for um, open education. And it's specifically focusing on, on higher education because it talks about, it's a framework about openness at all levels of a higher education institution, but also about uh, open science, open data, open research, open educational resources, open pedagogies that are very important for inclusion. And, and there is a dimension in there I'm going to show you that is re about recognition. And I know that in Ireland you have a, a big initiative on micro credentials that fit very well with the recognition dimension of the framework. So we, we have expanded a little bit uh, uh, the scope of the questions in the checking tool to include a section based on the GCOMPEDU framework, which is very much focusing on the higher education sector. Okay. So before I go there to show you a little bit more of what has changed changed, I just would like to invite everyone for the ones who are not part yet of the GCOMPEDU community, you can see the address over here, please join us, it's open for everyone, we are going to start a series of webinars very soon because we want to make this community a bit more live, so if you join there, you get the news of what is going on and hopefully you'll be able to participate in these webinars that we will start very soon, okay. Now, uh, let me go through show you a little bit of the open edu framework i don't know how many of you are already familiar with this framework but we have developed it back in 2016 after a three-year uh, uh, research project um, 
uh, in which we were at the time responding to the need, you know, to a communication of the European Commission uh, about the need of uh, for um, universities and knowledge to be more open. So, but here, the one thing that we did was to expand a little bit more uh, on the concept of uh, um, open educational resources and but looking into it in relation to open education, which is a broader concept. So we had, we proposed in this framework, a working definition for open education, right? Because if you ask anyone, what is open education for you? You're going to have different answers. Everyone has a different idea. For some, it's open science. For others, it's open education resources, so on and so forth. So we thought it was important to uh, propose a working definition. So that's what we do in this framework. And we, we also have here 10 dimensions for open education, as I have briefly mentioned, um, in which we would include in the content dimension, everything related to OER and content creation. And in relation to the to the G, uh, G Compedu framework, you know, that relates to area two, which is digital resources, right? So it would be kind of uh, um, uh, dealt with within the content dimension. Um, although obviously the G Compedu framework um, has been published and after, was published afterwards, G Comp, uh, the Open Edu came first. Um, and then we talk about open pedagogies, what it means to be an open institution, an open educator, as I mentioned, recognition, everything related to learning paths, micro-credentials, collaboration between universities. It was designed firstly for universities, although it can be used across sectors, right? Because it's very easily adapted. So the, the dimensions here in the center are considered the central dimensions, the core dimensions that we call of open education. And the four dimensions in the outwards, we consider them the transversal dimensions. Meaning that they, 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 the, the dimensions outwards, technology, strategy, leadership, and quality are actually supporting the core dimensions at all times. But we have to take into account that all dimensions interrelate with one another. They do not really work alone. So if you're talking about content, it's obviously related to pedagogy because we use content and pedagogy together. Now we have to have our ways of teaching. At the same time, with the support of technology, hopefully also with some strategy behind it which can be individual or institutional with quality because it's 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 an important dimension so you know it's always to bear in mind that they work together okay um and of course i can i can talk to you further about this if you wish but i want to move on to show you let me see if i can scroll down a little bit uh, to show you that we have, here's the report, if anyone is interested to read through the framework, I must also say that uh, the full framework is uh, in the annex of this report, so please have a look at the annex, because there you have uh, questions to tick, you know, if you are checking the strategy of openness of your institution of, or your research group or even your own practices. So as you see, this is a support framework for higher education institutions, and then um, in 2019, we have published another report based on the, the, the Open Edu framework for focusing on academics, on the actual uh, lecturers and researchers. So how can you actually be an open academic, right? So this, this one is, focused, is focusing on the 10 dimensions, but uh, proposing a reflection, a self-reflection for academics on how they could have their practices more open. So very briefly, uh, this is not online, but you also have a self-reflection tool inside of this report okay and how does it actually relate to the new to the new um version of the compedu that we have and this is what i want to show you very briefly uh, so this is the actual master the new master document that i'm showing you that's why i told you i would take you behind the scene with me because this is going to be made available in our uh web page very soon because we are um, um adapting the web page right now and we're going to put this master version over there and as you can see for higher education we now have area seven no which is open education and we have so the first part of this area let me see if i can navigate it through okay the first part of this uh of this um Area seven, we are focusing on finding and using open licenses and digital resources. So actually, this is why I said to you, this is very much related to area two. So we can always look at this and try and find it back, map it against the DigiCompedu framework because there is this transversality also between the two frameworks, right? So it's about uh, open educational resources and it has progression levels from, from zero to six now. So we have, um, 
uh, more answer options than before. Okay, now we have six possible options. Zero taking zero are the points here given to someone who knows nothing. We had to take into account that some people know very little about that subject area. No, and this applies for the entire framework nowadays, from zero to six options now. This has been changed because we have revised the questions in there using the uh, Bloom's digital taxonomy. I don't know how many of you are familiar. Andrea, sorry to interrupt there. I'm just I'm just wondering, um, we're, we're still seeing the practical guidelines screen. Is, is that correct? Or do you want to show us the other? No, I want to show the other. Are you not seeing the other one? No, we're still seeing the practical guidelines. Oh, OK. What uh, a pity. If you want to stop your sharing and then start your sharing again, maybe, or? Yes, um, I'll do that. Continue. Sorry to interrupt you now. And thanks to Fiona. No, thanks for letting me know. Let me try again, OK? If not, I'll just um, talk through it. And uh, very soon, we'll be able to have the actual document. So it's not a problem whatsoever. Let me see if you can see it now. Can you see it now? Yes, yeah. thank you, Andrea. Oh, perfect. Much better. OK, so I was telling you that we now have six answer options, no? And, and whereas we had fewer options before. So we have increased some answer options. We have revised the questions to add a, a, a better progression level of complexity. So if you choose the zero, you know, if you choose the first options, it's because you have not as many as, as much competence on that subject area. And as you increase, if you if you reach, for example, if you choose uh, as an answer option five and six, it means that you are more competent. OK, so we included we revised the way there was a progression in the levels in there using the Bloom's digital taxonomy as a model. But obviously we had to adapt the taxonomy as well because it was not enough for us to cover you know, all the cognitive engagement necessary to be represented in there, right? So we had to adapt the taxonomy. So we have done this adaptation uh, of the, all the questions. We have um, included the area seven that also deals not only with OER, I'm not sure if I can scroll down because it seems that my screen is stuck, but it also deals with some of the, those dimensions, access, um, pedagogy, and the last one is research, which is talking about open access access, open data, research based on open data. So everything that relates to higher education. OK, and we have tested these new piloted, these new uh, these new questions using the checking tool with um, 10 universities in Spain. We had about 563 exactly participants taking part of this piloting. And we are now launching a full national uh, initiative, a full national self-reflection for Spanish universities in the second week of April, in which we have more than 90 universities participating. So nearly 100% of the universities in Spain taking part in this national exercise. And so we do psychometric analysis to validate the question. So this is why we, we did this pilot, right? But we already have countries interested in doing it also at a national level. We are talking to Switzerland. We've been talking to, to you guys in Ireland, you know? And so we have many other countries already interested in this new version that we are going to release as soon as we have the web page ready. So I take it one or two weeks more and we are gonna have this new version that you can uh, um, download and use. It's going to be available in the tool, okay. Um, I think, do I have another couple of minutes or how, how are we doing for time? Because it like- Yeah, to be another, another three minutes there, Andrea. Brilliant, okay. So, okay, so I just want to show you, let me see if I can still show my screen because now I'm not sure. Okay, so I've just told you about the, the Spanish, no, the uh, experience with Crue. Can you see my screen with No, if you, just, if you just want to stop that sharing and then st start again. Yeah, I have to yeah. stop, stop and, no and do it again. Okay, there we go. Okay, can you see it now? Yes, perfect. Okay, so Crue is it's kind of a national, uh, it's called, um, uh, the, I do not know how to translate, it could be the National Association for Spanish, for the Rectors of Spanish Universities, really. You know? So for the, a type of national association for Spanish universities, and they are taking part, they have helped us uh, in this um, 
um, in collaboration with us, revising, you know, uh, what we had changed in these questions and piloting. So I have to acknowledge Crewy for that. And that's our first experience. As a result, we plan to publish uh, the full results of this um, towards the summer when we finish the data collection. And also we have a paper, we are producing a paper explaining in details uh, the methodology taking for uh, revisiting the tool, the questions, etc. because uh, some researchers and people that are doing research are very interested in knowing about this more, let's say, scientific processes behind it. No? And finally, I just wanted to mention you that not only that, but we also have a collaboration with MetaRed, which is a part, it's a branch of the Santander Universities, the Santander Bank, uh, which you may be familiar with. And um, they have been using this tool also in Latin America with more than nine countries and will now start using in Latin America the new version of the G Compedu tool in the checking, using the checking tool uh, for universities in Latin America. Um, but in their case, they, are, they have just built a new platform exclusively for that. Okay, so I'll stop sharing my screen. And um, I am here to, uh, to answer any questions you may have. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Andrea. I'm just going to pause the recording.